Hello, welcome to this lecture on stability of conservative systems. This lecture is part of the lecture series Lagrange Mechanics. In this lecture, I will introduce the concept of stability for a conservative system and show you how to determine whether a system is stable or not. If we assume that a system is conservative, in fact, what we are saying is that there are no dampers in the system, that there is no excitation, there are no uh, forces or moments acting on the system, and there are no prescribed displacement, prescribed coordinates. Then the kinetic energy depends on the generalized velocity and the generalized displacement, and the potential energy depends on the generalized displacement. And we can say that the sum of these two, the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy, is constant. And this sum is what we call the total energy of the system. And let me show you with an example. If we take the pendulum, as you see here, and we take an equilibrium position for this pendulum, which is uh, with the pendulum pointing down, and we give an initial perturbation, initial rotational velocity, we can calculate the energies, and we see that the kinetic energy, uh, light blue curve here, is varying in time after we give this perturbation. And the potential energy is, of course, also varying in time. But the sum of the two, the total energy, the black line, is constant, as you see. Having said this, now we can introduce the idea of stability for a conservative system. Imagine we have this equilibrium position, which is either theta is zero when the pendulum is up or theta is pi when the pendulum is down. And we give a very small initial velocity perturbation. This means we give the system an initial kinetic energy. And the question is now, given this initial kinetic energy, what will happen next, directly after this perturbation? Will the kinetic energy increase or will the kinetic energy decrease? If we take the first equilibrium position, theta is zero, then we see that after we give this initial uh, kinetic energy perturbation, the kinetic energy will continue to increase over time. And this is an, an unstable position. We can test that ourselves if we try to put a pendulum up, it will fall, so the kinetic energy will increase. If we consider the other equilibrium position with theta is pi, that means the pendulum is down, then when we give this initial kinetic energy, the kinetic energy will tend to decrease. And this is an stable uh, a stable equilibrium position, and we can test that ourselves with, with a pendulum. Uh, so this is the definition of stability for a conservative system. The next step we need to take is to define this stability, stability mathematically. So we take the energy balance between the initial condition, which is on the right here, kinetic energy plus potential energy, the total energy, and the situation directly after the perturbation, which is here on the left. And as you know, this sum is a total energy. The total energy is constant, so both total energies have to be the same. Then if we rewrite this, we can say that the uh, difference in potential energy between after and, and uh, just before the perturbation has to be equal to the different difference in kinetic energy. And what we said, uh, the definition of uh, stability says that for a, a small value of Q minus Q zero, this difference between the kinetic energy uh, for the initial perturbation and the kinetic energy after the perturbation has to be positive. Then the necessary condition for uh, stability of an equilibrium position is that the potential energy after the perturbation minus the potential energy 
the given position has to be larger than zero. So, in other words, the potential energy should tend to increase when we give a perturbation. And if we now define the generalized displacement as the generalized displacement at the equilibrium position plus a Q1, which is a very small perturbation, then we can write a Taylor series expansion of the potential energy around the equilibrium position. And that is what we will do now. And this Taylor series expansion for the potential energy at Q is the potential energy at the equilibrium position and then the derivative of the potential energy with respect to the generalized coordinates evaluated at the equilibrium position times Q minus Q0, and that's Q1, plus the second order term is one half of Q1 transpose the derivative of V with respect to Q transpose and then again the derivative with respect to Q and this evaluated for Q is Q0 and this then times Q1 plus higher order terms. The first thing we need to realize is that Q0 is an equilibrium position and by the definition of equilibrium this term here is zero because v to q evaluated at q is q zero is zero. And this quadratic term contains this matrix v q, v to q and then to q again and then evaluated for q is q zero. And this matrix is the stiffness matrix of the system and it's a symmetric matrix. So it's a symmetric stiffness matrix of the system k is zero. Therefore, with our definition of stability, what we say is that V at Q minus V at Q0 has to be larger than zero. And in other words, we are saying that this quadratic term, one, one half of Q1 transpose K0 Q1, should be larger than zero. And for this condition to be fulfilled, K0, the stiffness matrix, should be positive definite. And when is a matrix positive definite? Well, for us, it's two conditions. One is that the, de the determinant of the matrix should be larger than zero. And the second one is that the diagonal entries should be greater than zero. And this is a sufficient condition for a two by two matrix. Let me give you an example for the case of the pendulum. This is the, the pendulum we considered in the lecture about equilibrium positions. We saw there that this is the potential energy for this pendulum. And then when we take the derivative of V to Q, this is the equation, it should be equal to zero. And from there we find the two equilibrium positions. And now we are going to ev evaluate the stability of these equilibrium positions. To determine whether the equilibrium positions are stable or not, we need to look into this matrix, as we said, and in fact, we need to determine whether this matrix is positive definite or not. So the first thing to do is to calculate the matrix. In this case, because we have one generalized coordinate, uh, this matrix is in fact a number, a scalar, and it's mg cos theta, as you see there. And the next thing we need to do is substitute the value of the equilibrium position to obtain the stiffness matrix. So if we, for the first case of uh, theta is uh, zero, we uh, substitute the equilibrium position, then we see that the stiffness matrix in this case is equal to minus mg. So it's smaller than zero, that means this equilibrium position is unstable as, as we expected. And if we go to the other equilibrium position, then the result we obtain is that K0 
k0 is mg and this is a positive number larger than zero so this equilibrium position is stable once we have this uh, stable equilibrium position the next step we need to take is linearize and we will do that in the next lecture thanks for watching and see you next time